over a period of the last uh, 17 centuries or so, since the third century, uh, it has been ordained by the men leaders of the Catholic Church that women should not be uh, deacons or not be priests. And uh, I've written uh, Pope Francis about this and responded. He got a, I got a response that I was able to quote in the book, and uh, he promised me, not because it was I, that he thought it would, should be a greater role for women uh, in the future in the Catholic Church. But By the way, did you, did you write the Pope's snail mail? <laughs> I did. I, I typed the letter myself, <laughs> and I mailed it to him through the uh, representatives that he has in Washington to represent the, mm. the Vatican, yes. <laughs> Sally's uh, snail mail question reflects something that's come out during President Carter's uh, book tour, which is that he suspects the NSA is looking at his emails. So this is a good time to ask you, why would they do that? <laughs> well, are, are you? Do you think they think you're dangerous, or that you're talking to dangerous people, or that they just collect everybody? If you've sent an email today, they have recorded it. If you've made a telephone call today, they have recorded it. The fact that you made the call, that it originated with you, and they know whom you called, and they know how long the call lasted. And they record the entire thing. They don't go back and listen to your words, they say. But if they want to later on, they can go back and listen to the exact words that you spoke. And, and I do think that that needs to be corrected, and I hope that President Obama will do it. I would like to see him do it by executive order, which I think he could, but I, and I think it's going to be a delay and maybe an attenuation of his corrective action uh, by the Congress. But anyway, that's, that's what I have long for a good while known. Uh, I, ha I faced the same question when I was in the White House. In 1978, we passed the so-called FISA Act, and that prevented any intelligence agency of the United States from interfering with one single telephone call or one communication of an American citizen unless an objective jury said this was a threat to our security. And that prevailed pretty much until 9-11, and then they began to liberalize this, and, and laws were passed by the U.S. Congress, most of which were not even read by anybody that didn't serve in the intelligence committees, and the rest of the Congress didn't know what was there. And when they passed the laws, it still had some restrictions in it. There's no doubt in my mind that the NSA went much further than the law permitted, and now a uh, think we're making some so, corrections. So to ask you the question that I, I think a lot of people wonder, if you were president today and it was within your power as president yes. to issue a pardon to Edward Snowden, whose revelations of these activities uh, lead all, all of us to know what the NSA has been collecting uh, about us and about people, would you do that? Would you, would you offer a pardon to Snowden? No, because you can't pardon someone who hasn't been tried and convicted. And so I think that Edward Snowden, uh, if I were president, I, I wouldn't tell him what to do, but if he decided to come back to the United States and face the actual violations of law that he perpetrated and was found guilty uh, by a 12-person jury, uh, and then he was sentenced to death, I would certainly consider a pardon, yes. But I can't say what I would do because I don't have the information that President Obama has about what damage has been done to our security apparatus. I just read the Washington Post and a couple of other minor uh, <laughs> periodicals. Good, good start. <laughs>